I just got home from a nine-day cross-country tour screening our latest documentary. My filmmaking partner, Kian Simone, joins me tonight to talk about it. I'm Sheila Gunn-Reed, and you're watching The Gun Show. In a vast land of untamed beauty, hidden within its borders lie stories of unwavering faith and resilience. When the world was engulfed in fear, COVID-19, which is causing all of the concern right now, pastors faced an unimaginable trial. They were wrongfully persecuted during the COVID-19 pandemic, their voices silenced by oppressive measures. And we realized something doesn't match up. There's an agenda under the surface here. I cannot abide under their, their wishes. I cannot just abide this new norm, if you will. In the face of adversity, they held on to their beliefs, defending the sacred right to worship. Out of this property, you Nazis! Out! Join us on an extraordinary voyage across Canada as we shine a light on the untold stories of these pastors who were wrongfully persecuted during COVID-19. Witness their courage, their unwavering faith, and their determination to reclaim their voices in the face of adversity. I'm not gonna let those who are in Ottawa determine my peace, my joy. You're disobedient to the government or disobedient to God, and take your pick. This summer, embark on an unforgettable exploration through Church Under Fire, Canada's War on Christianity, a documentary that will inspire and challenge your perceptions. Experience their remarkable stories, a testament to the indomitable human spirit and the power of faith. I just got home Monday morning so that I could finish the cross-country tour of our latest documentary here in Edmonton with a very successful sold-out screening at Church in the Vine in Edmonton. You see, we've been touring our documentary, Church Under Fire, Canada's War on Christianity, and we've been taking it to the congregations that survived this very dark time. And I say survived, but as it turns out, they thrived. Our documentary details the persecution of Christian churches in the name of public health. And we set it up so that you can understand that the persecution of churches and the pastors who went to jail for not turning away their congregations, it didn't happen in a bubble. There was a lead up um, wherein Justin Trudeau picked away at religious freedom and stigmatized Christians until it became socially acceptable to haul pastors away in handcuffs because they were singing or giving communion or not turning away congregants to meet an arbitrary government gathering restriction. And we've been warmly received. We've had sold out showings all across the country, Regina, Winnipeg, Calgary, Calgary, Edmonton, St. John, Ottawa, Toronto, Aylmer, Ontario. It's just been incredible. It's been heartwarming, but it is still hard to watch this documentary over and over again. And I've seen it dozens of times. Heck, I'm in it. Um, but it's an important story that needs to be told. And we're not done touring the documentary. But I thought I would bring Kian on with me today to discuss the reception of the documentary, what it's like touring this thing, how you can get your own copy going forward, how you can get some of the exclusive merch, and how perhaps you might want to bring this documentary to your own community and host your own screening. So joining me now in an interview we recorded just moments ago is my friend, colleague, and filmmaking partner, Kian Simone. Take a listen. This free episode of The Gun Show is brought to you by my mug. I know, it's pretty cool. 
so is this hoodie I got on, and you could have it on too if you check out our special website at rebelnewsstore.com. That's where you can see Freedom Focus hoodies that we have for you, beanies, cell phone cases, you name it, all while supporting our journalism where we fight to bring you the other side of the story as opposed to, you know, being forced by the Trudeau government to fund leftist media out of your taxes. The truth is... Without you and your generosity, there is no Rebel News. So again, if you like the reports that we bring you and that we also fight for freedoms in Canada, please consider doing some shopping, picking up some swag at rebelnewsstore.com. We appreciate your support. So joining me now is my friend and colleague, Rebel News Head of Documentaries, and my documentary filmmaking partner, Kian Simone. We both just came back from an incredibly grueling, I would even call it oppressive, documentary tour schedule where we brought our documentary, Church Under Fire, Canada's War on Christianity, to venues all across the country, including to the congregations, many of them who are featured in the documentary and who lived through it. So I thought I would have Kian come back on the show so we can talk about the reception of the documentary and the most asked question at our screenings, how do we get our hands on this documentary to show our friends? So Kian, thanks for coming on the show. I am still not recovered. <laughs> I still feel car sick. I, I feel car sick. I don't know if I'm jet lagged or hungry. Um, I'm having difficulty sleeping because we were never in a time zone long enough to adjust and we were taking really early morning flights to make sure that we got to the venues on time and to also save money, <laughs> to be quite honest. Um, but it was exciting, right? Like it was it was long. It was like nine days on the road. Um, and it started even before that because we did two showings in Calgary where you are, but I had to travel for those before we started our cross, 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 cross country tour. Um what did you think? You know, that was uh, probably one of the coolest things I've ever done in my life. Um, there was a, there's, there was times, I think, every single day where in the morning we'd get up at 5 a.m. Eastern time, so 3 a.m. our time, after like a wild yeah. night before. Um, and I was just like, it, it really hurt and it really sucked. And then it, the instant gratification, I guess I would say, of that night seeing... 300 400 people's faces and um seeing all of our supporters it really made it all worth it it was uh again that i think that was one of the best and the coolest things i've ever done in my life me too uh it was hard but i was kind of sad to see it over yeah um it, you know it, it, just weird feeling we wrapped up the first leg of the documentary showings in Edmonton on Monday night uh, to just an absolutely phenomenal reception from Church in the Vine. The biggest uh, Rebel trip. News history in uh, documentary showings. Was it? Yeah. Yes. Yes, it was. Um, I have had over 500 people in their venue. Pastor Tracy and Rodney Fortin, they're featured in the documentary uh, because Pastor Tracy and Church in the Vine received an $80,000 regulatory offense penalty for not allowing occupational health and safety inspectors into the church because Alberta Health Services couldn't weasel their way in. So they started wanting to inspect the church as though it were a work site. But uh, I mean, that was, I, I was sad, kind of, uh, tired for sure, because we had just flown back from Winnipeg in the morning, but kind of sad to see it end. But it really ended on a high note uh, because the reception was so warm and the people were so, uh, I think they were touched by uh, the care that you took in telling their story. Yeah, I think uh, that that definitely really clicked in. You know, in Manitoba, I think it clicked in too. Um, but it was really Edmonton seeing, you know, it wasn't just a few people from the congregation. There was probably literally all 350 or however many people that they have at the church who were all there. Um, and we kind of, it's funny when we were on tour, we kind of judged reception by if people clap between the chapters or if they clapped at certain things or if they laughed at certain things. And we've both now watched this documentary many times. So we know what's coming. And I just kind of uh, see like which city kind of liked which part and Edmonton liked everything. Like they, it was yeah. like, it really was just universal um, of all the shows into one of just everybody and not enjoying, but enjoying. 
Does that make sense? Maybe it doesn't make sense yeah. to people watching, but it might make sense to you. You always say you're not going to enjoy this documentary at the start of every show. So just watch it. But I think everybody there watched it. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And it, that's it. that is true. I do say, uh, normally I say, please enjoy our documentary at, before we start rolling. But uh, frankly, people don't enjoy this documentary because it is so dark and it is so painful to watch. I had a, a lifelong friend who was at the show. Hi, Tara, if you're watching. And um, I, she was crying before we got through the introduction <laughs> of the documentary. Um, and, you know, there are times that where I sort of feel a little bit tight in my chest um, as you see these pastors ripped away from their families. And so people, they don't enjoy the documentary, but it's important that people see it. And Ezra always says that he is left viscerally angry every time he sees it. And, um, you know, I think that anger is not a bad thing. It's a useful thing if you use it uh, to make sure this never happens again. Yeah, I don't know if you noticed, but I uh, I never stayed inside the venue when Pastor Phil was up. Yeah. I always either, I, and if I was, I had my back turned. I can't watch that one. I made the damn thing and I can't watch it. Yeah. It's Phil's kids at the door. Um, and, you know, I was talking to Phil's family. I don't think I'm talking at a turn, but his youngest was pretty little um, when he was arrested and held in solitary confinement for seven days for the crime of not turning away his congregants. And because she was so little, I, she didn't remember all of it. And it was, she was really seeing it for, with her family for the first time and sort of understanding what had happened to her dad during that week. I guess it was almost two years ago now where he was, you know, held like a prisoner uh, in uh, St. John prison. That's moving on. I can't do it. <laughs> oh, I know. I know. It, it, it's, it's tough. And yeah, like you say, we've seen it uh, dozens and dozens of times. Um, now, uh, I want to talk to you about one of the things that people uh, constantly ask us about. They even ask us before they've even seen the movie, which is <laughs> kind of weird because I'm like, I don't know if you're going to want to share it, um, but thank you for your confidence in us. But people want to know how they can see this documentary in the future because they sort of leave uh, wanting to evangelize this documentary to their friends and family who may be on just a little bit too much CBC or um, maybe heard about Pastor Art because how he was, you know, frequently featured on Fox News, but didn't really know the story of Pastor Phil and the heartbreak that befell his family or Pastor Tobias or some of the other congregations. And they're kind of shocked um, and they want to tell other people. So what are the ways that people can do that? Yeah. Well, I mean, we definitely made it, as you say, for a space alien. Um, you don't yeah. have to know anything about anything uh, to be able to watch this. So it's that that's good for uh, the viewers now to listen about sharing it to their friends and family. Um, you don't need to have that precursor or that sit down with them and kind of explain things. You can really just put it in their hands and let them watch. Um I think it's at the end of next week, we'll have DVDs ready to go. So we can buy those on Rebel News Store. I'd say those are probably more of a gift than uh, something to give your grandson or something to watch because he won't know how to watch it. Um, but we're also <laughs> at the, at the hopefully at the end of this week, if not the start of next week, um, we'll have it up on Rebel News so that it can be purchased individually and as well on Rebel News Plus. Um, I think the purchase individually is really important because that can be shared or that can be bought for other people um, and so that they can really just press play and, and, and watch it. Um, am I missing anything? We'll, we'll be licensing uh, it to licensing. churches and stuff like that, um, like giving it to mega churches and letting them kind of play it for their congregations and stuff like that, which I think is really important. Oh, in distribution, um, I'll tell the story that I tell everybody in the crowd is uh, for I, I knew that this was I don't want to say good, but it's good. Um, it's great. It's a good documentary. It's great. I'm it's, really proud of it. It's a bad. It's bad, but it's good. Um, bad yeah. in the sense of the context of what's in it. Um, so I knew that America. We knew that the whole Rebel News knew that this was something that America needed to see. Um, 
so I started calling or well, Googling how to play your movie in America. Um, nothing really came up. But uh, after that, I, f I found the way to basically get th it up on things like Amazon Prime and Hulu and HBO. Like I was wondering how you kind of do that. And you need a what's called an aggravator. So it's a distribute it's a distributor in America. Um, so I called four and I got answers from all of them. And before they even let me give the context of the documentary, they said no, just because I'm Canadian. But you know, I I want to be mad, but I kind of understand. They uh, it's America, right? That that's where all the movies come from. Um, and then I called the fifth, and you have 15 seconds to pitch your movie. And I've never done that before, so maybe the first four were just maybe it was bad. Um, but on the fifth one, I kind of got just really frustrated. So I didn't even pitch the documentary. I said, I know you're American, and I know America likes to hear about other people's problems more than they like to hear about their own. And he laughed. And then he uh, he said, okay, tell me about your movie. Um, so I told him about the Canadian pastors, and I just kind of went blah, 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 probably 20 seconds of just uh, spewing it out. And he stopped me, and he said, you're Kean, right? And I said, yes. I never gave him my name. And he said, you made an amazing documentary. I've already seen your trailer. And he said, yes, I would like to um, take this on. And so that was great because he saw Rebel News on Fox News. And he said, I would have never known if it was for you guys. So he's already a fan. He's already been on our website looking at our trailer and stuff like nice. that. So it was just so cool. It was so cool. I'd like to take credit. But really all I did was call him and he answered. Um it, so it was really awesome. So I think with that, um, hopefully it, that maybe it doesn't mean theaters in the States because we, we are competing with some really big – like at that point, we literally are competing with Oppenheimer and Barbie. Right. And Mission Impossible. Like that – It's that's big. Um, and right. I wouldn't expect the theaters who, as the distributor says, the theaters are in the business of business in America – um, they're not going to take down an Oppenheimer screen to put this up, but that does not uh, leave us with no hope because my <clears throat> mission or job with this is to make sure it gets into the house of every American. Um, I'm not too uh, worried about bringing people out of their house to the theater for this. So we'll we'll, we'll get it. Now, uh, one of the other questions we get is perk fulfillment because we uh, found we funded this movie in a different way than we funded our other documentary projects. Usually we just say, hey, we're making this documentary. Wouldn't you mind helping us? <laughs> because this is a story that nobody else is going to tell. And we made that same ask, but we did it a little differently because we wanted people to feel invested in this because a lot of people did also live through this um, simultaneously with their pastors. And so we wanted to give you Canadians kind of ownership over the documentary the same way we did. So when we asked for money or when people made donations, we offered them perks at different levels, depending on how much they donated. So uh, one of the questions we get is, when am I getting my stuff? So <laughs> give us an update on that. So the most uh, universal, no matter how much you uh, gave, is you get a copy of the movie. So when we start, when we put it up, for people to buy, you'll get your free version or the version that you already paid for. Um, right. T-shirts, we um, most people probably know that we already have T-shirts up on the site for the official documentary T-shirt um, and sweaters and stuff like that. But we're making a special one for the people who donated. So that should actually be done tomorrow. Um, I'll make sure that we get one, Sheila, because they're pretty darn cool. Um, yeah. So they'll, they'll, we'll get that bundled with the DVD for the people who got the DVD package. If not, then the t-shirt will go out probably next week when everything starts getting shipped out. So we need to wait for the DVDs. Um, the idea was to not um, just send certain people certain things when we get it. I, it was, I think I just made the call to when we get everything, let's just ship it out to everybody at that time. Great. So just so people aren't uh, upset that the t-shirt's not ready, but they got the DVD. I, I think I if I donated money to a documentary i would want to open up a big box with all my goodies yeah so i figured that that uh, people would appreciate that more so hopefully by the end of july it would be shipped to you um i don't want to make any promises for canada, canada post but um <laughs> it's coming <laughs> yeah. almost yeah, finished. Yeah. that's great and uh, you know you touched on the merch there and i'm wearing 
uh, one of the shirts, hoodies, um, and it has uh, John 832 on the sleeve. Um, this is some of the best merch that I think we've ever created here at Rebel News. I think it is on par with the ungovernable merch, um, which you appear to live in. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's my but, favorite. Uh, yeah, uh, me too. It's universal, the ungovernable merch. But this is some great stuff. It looks a little bit different aesthetically than some of the other merch that you'll find in rebelnewsstore.com. It, it's beautiful. It, and, and you know, if you are able to see us, friends at home, at one of the screenings, we do generally try to have merch with us. And once you see it, I mean, it's just flying off the tables because it's beautiful uh, why uh, i'll ask you because your hands are sort of intrinsically involved in everything why is this merch just a little bit different than the other stuff that we've done yeah you know uh we have a uh, uh our one of our executive producers of the movie um donated a lot of money he's great they're a great couple um yeah a great couple and i had a zoom call with them and they both had their um it's really, a, you have your t-shirt and then you have like a square just like this and it's just something super controversial mm. and funny and kind of get like double looks from people. Or maybe it's just a rebel, but they had theirs on and uh, it just clicked. And I was like, you know, they would wear that shirt because they're, you know, super mega fans. They they want to be a part of this and they just, they definitely put the shirt on just to show support because they were getting on a Zoom call with me. Um, and I just thought, I was like, what about the people who do support Rebel and don't want to wear controversial shirts? Yeah. Or don't want to wear something that just that says Rebel um, just because they don't want that, you know, altercation in the Costco. And I was thinking, and I, I spoke to our um, person who kind of uh, does the, like, I kind of give the ideas, and then Danny, who is our graphic designer, kind of does the designs. And I told her, I was like, let's do something really different. Like, let's do something that my aunt who's not a Rebel supporter would wear, who would buy, who I could give her a t-shirt and she would wear it. Um, and so we just kind of came up with this, you know, let's at least keep it a little bit freedom oriented so that there is mm -hmm. a little bit of a hint. So I think John 832, I think that's the, is that truth? You shall know the truth and truth shall set you free. Yes. Yeah. See, I'm learning. Um, so, so it does have that uh, freedom oriented uh, symbol to it. And at the same time, anybody can wear it. And it's cool. It's really cool. It's it's hip. But at the same time, yeah. it's so simple. So it, yeah, it's, it's great. Old people, young people. I'm not even Christian. And I wear it. It's like it's cool. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Um, now, you touched on you use the word executive producer. And that's one of the things I'm really proud of about this documentary is at the end of the documentary, there's just hundreds of names of people who are listed at the end of the documentary. And, you know, you might think maybe those are congregants or maybe those pe those are people who did physical work on the documentary, but that's not who those people are. Why don't you tell us about them? Yeah, so those hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, I'd say almost a thousand. I don't have the number, but I kind of want to know the number now. It's a lot. Um, are all the people who donated for perks, whether it was five dollars twenty five dollars or executive producers ten thousand um, dollars you know it's it's an amazing feeling when you watch the credits roll at the end I still look up I have my phone mm -hmm. filming the people um, like they're, they're clapping I have my phone in one hand and then I'm looking up at the screen with the like just watching the the list and it's it's such a great feeling that there's that many people who, who donated before the movie before we even really started filming, they had that much faith in us to make sure, like, to know that we would tell the story properly. And uh, I don't know how many people on that list have seen it yet, um, but I, I, I do think that we would make them proud. I do think that they, I, I do know that one person who came said that who was who donated a large amount of money who said that it was more than worth it. So I think, uh, I think it's, I think they'll be happy. And I'm happy. Yeah. Yeah. I'm happy too. I, it's you, when you walk out on stage, cause you know, after the documentary shows, I, I do my little blah, blah, blah. You do all the hard work and I do all the talking and I just sort of turn and stand there and it's just names just rolling by. And it's one of those things that, you know, like if you were up at 3am to catch a 5am flight and you're tired, 
you see that and it just fills up your uh, tank to yeah. fight on the next day, to fight through the next day, because like what a what a gift of of those people to have that kind of faith and confidence in us to tell these stories accurately. And those are just hundreds, if not over a thousand names of people who are just cheering for us to continue on and tell these stories because nobody else will. And um, I'm just so grateful for every last one of them. And, you know, as we always say at the end of the documentary, what you won't see here is made in partnership with the government of Canada or with funds from Telefilm Canada or the National Film Board or anything like that. And um, I think you're hard pressed to find a documentary in this country, with the exception of a few that don't have that government stamp of approval at the bottom. And you we know don't. why they and have I'm that? Very proud of it. It's because hmm. uh, independent movies get significant tax credits, and that's one ah. of the things that they need to put at the end of the movie. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Isn't that interesting? Yep, so the <laughs> government just made sure that they want that. They'll give you the three, two, two thousand, three thousand dollars $2,000, and just to make, they pretty much, it's almost like the government pays them to f- make sure that that's on there. Ah, it's like a stick in their advertisement on it like a nascar yeah. right <laughs> stick their sticker on the side um we still are not done our documentary screenings um we've got a few more scheduled out uh if you want to talk about those that's great and also if people want a screening because i think we're still you know like we'll still take a few more um let us know how people can uh see the next screenings, find out about them, or contact us to book one. So if you go to churchunderfiremovie.com, it's a new URL, um, that's where you can find our, our next screenings. I think we have one in Northern Ontario, or I guess yes. people laugh at me when I say Northern Ontario, Huntsville. Um, <laughs> and uh, so we, Outside of the GTA, it may of, as well be Northern, yeah, on, <laughs> Northern outside Ontario. Outside of the middle of the universe, GTA. Um, yeah. We have a screening in Huntsville, and then we start our BC uh, tour leg. Um, we are Vancouver, Whistler, Powell River. I know Powell River and Whistler are launched already. Um, yes. We're still working on just finding out some details with the others, uh, which I'm really excited for. It. I got so many. E- I got more emails from people um, who were like, let's say, happy with it, or just wanted to ask me questions. I got more e- people emailing me angry that we didn't go to BC. Um, but uh, really quick, BC is like the the home of film in Canada. So everybody's yeah. super woke there when it comes to movies. And like normally when you have a venue where you could play a movie, there is no way that they would take a Rebel News documentary. Like no way. Um, trust me, I tried. Um, and if you want to host your own screening, I believe same link, churchunderfiremovie.com. Um, there's a media inquiry uh, spot there where uh, you can kind of put in what, what it is you're looking for, what kind of venue you're hosting, um, if you want Sheila and I to come kind of thing. Um, and that, that'll be really fun because uh, there 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 have already been people who have emailed who have cooler ideas than I had about screening. So um, hopefully, yeah, if you have any ideas, send it there or just email me at keyandsmoney at rebelnews.com and we can go from there. Cool. Kian, I know you have work to do today, and so do I. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we're both home for about a week before we go back out on the road uh, showing the documentary. And, um, you know, it's exhausting, but <laughs> but I'm I'm happy to do it. I'm happy to meet with the people, and I, I'm happy to hear their feedback because um, I think so far it's been universally – the feedback is good about a very bad time in Canadian history. I agree. I'm uh, I'm really excited. I know I was really happy to get home and hit my pillow, but I'm really excited to go back <laughs> out, even if it's. I think that's just for the one Huntsville show. Um, yeah. I'm really really excited. Thank you for having I, uh, me on too. Um, yeah, it's just so right. nice to talk about it and yeah, go over everything. It's great. Again. I'm not used to sleeping laying down. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I've been sleeping on airplanes for ten days. Like this. So. so it, <laughs> uh kian thanks so much uh we'll talk very very soon uh probably in the next uh 15 minutes yeah as we work together <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> thanks buddy thank you
This free episode of The Gun Show is brought to you by... Adam Sos here for Rebel News. You know, our company is growing quickly and we'd actually like for your company to grow too. That's why this ad space that I'm speaking through right now is actually available for you to purchase. So instead of people listening to me, they could actually be learning about your company, learning about your business. If this interests you, if this is an opportunity you'd like to capitalize on, send us an email at ads at rebelnews.com. Well, friends, we've come to the portion of the show where I invite your viewer feedback. Unlike the mainstream media, I actually care about what you think about the work that we're doing here at Rebel News. And that's why I give up my email address right now. It's Sheila at rebelnews.com. Put gun show letters in the subject line, two ends, please, so that it's easy for me to find your letter. And I know exactly what you're talking about <laughs> when you email me because I do get dozens, if not hundreds sometimes, depending on what I've done that day and <laughs> what sort of controversial nonsense I've been up to. Um, so gun show letters in the subject line, just so it's easier for me to find. Uh, today's letter comes to us from a regular viewer. I read his emails frequently on the show, and that could be you too if you email me a lot. Uh, it's Bruce Atchison. He lives in Radway, Alberta, and he often signs off um, with a tagline from his cat. And he emails me on last week's show that I filmed in the brand new studio in Toronto with my friend David Menzies. As I was in Toronto on the documentary tour, I still have other work to do. So I thought, why not use the new studio to film the gun show? I brought in David and we talked about the election of Olivia Chow to be the mayor of Toronto and what that means for the rest of Canada, because so many of these bad ideas are percolated in the Petri dish of Toronto. For example, Toronto has out of control gang violence and the liberals say, oh, you know what we got to do? Go to grab the guns of the Albertans and the Westerners because the government has left the borders completely wide open and they are soft on crime and the bail laws need reform. But instead of doing those things, the liberals have decided to take the path of least resistance and go after the most law-abiding people in the country because for the liberals, all guns are bad. Whereas for normal people, we realize that guns in the hands of bad people are bad and guns in the hands of me mean fewer coyotes bothering livestock. Anyway, <laughs> Bruce writes, hi, Sheila. I love it when you and David host any show. Well, David and I uh, frequently host the Rebel News daily live stream together. So we have what some might call chemistry. You and him are well matched and keep the show interesting. There are some hosts who are as who are as exciting as watching laundry dry on the line. Have you been watching CBC, Bruce? I don't feel like you're a CBC watcher, um, but it is true. Uh, David is, uh, he's funny. And uh, sometimes I'm the break to his gas pedal, but that's why I think we're well matched. I understand how you feel about Olivia Chow. She's a tool for the Chinese Communist Party. Yeah, isn't that interesting? <laughs> there have been reports about that. It's time all politicians and all levels of government were examined for influence by Beijing. I think influence by anybody. I would also be concerned about foreign influence with regard to uh, environmentalist mega charities out of San Francisco. Um, like Tides or whatever they call themselves now, Make Way. They, <laughs> their name was so stigmatized by anti-oil sands garbage that they had to change their name to Make Way here in Canada. Um, so, you know, I, I, I think there are, we shouldn't just be concerned about Beijing ruling Canadian politics. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm concerned about all kinds of foreign meddling and interloping. Did you know that Thorhill County blew 56,000 on airplane photos? That seems about right, although I bet drone photography would be a heck of a lot cheaper, but leave it to government to do the most expensive thing. A plane was buzzing around Radway last Thursday, July 6th for a few hours after supper. Why didn't they use Google Earth? Great question, uh, because government doesn't think about saving money, generally speaking. They could have learned all they needed to know for free. Meanwhile, they sold the second senior's excursion bus so various clubs have to fight over who gets to ride the bus on which days. I bet you that $56,000 could have went a long way to maintaining the senior's bus. But again, government doesn't think that way. This makes me wish Radway was back with Sturgeon County. We split with them in 1977 because they couldn't fix up Highway 2A. And besides that, residents like shopping in Redwater 
than pokey little Thorhild. Your lawyer, your loyal viewer, Bruce with Delta the cat sleeping on the couch. Bruce, you know, people might not know anything about Thorhild or Radway or Sturgeon County or the problems with Highway 28A. However, I think it is universal across this country that government wastes your money and they don't stop and think about the most responsible ways to spend your money and the most common sense practical solutions. And that is a problem that happens in big cities and small towns like Sleepy Little Radway. It's um, the universal rule <laughs> of all government from international levels of government all the way down to the tiniest municipality like your county, which I think has about 3,000 people <laughs> spread across a place the size of a small European country. <laughs> so it doesn't matter where you live. It's all the same. Well, everybody, that's the show for tonight. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll see everybody back here in the same time, in the same place next week. And as always, don't let the government tell you that you've had too much to think. <laughs>